Binance and CZ under attack by the SEC, the NFT market continues to see good volume, and Apple enters the metaverse. Welcome back to another Crypto Gorilla video. We have a ton to talk about that has happened in the past few days. As usual, none of this is financial advice, it is just my opinion. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, would you kindly hit that subscribe button? So Binance and CZ are both under attack from the SEC. They filed 13 charges against both the company and him personally in a 150 page document. The TLDR is essentially that Binance.com did not register as an exchange, broker, or clearing agency. They sold unregistered securities and mentioned products such as Simple Earn and BNB Vault. They did not prevent US customers from using Binance.com and they misled investors and misused their funds, similar to how Sam Bankman-Fried and his girlfriend did this over at FTX. Now, my opinion on all this is that the SEC is just going after anybody they can. They really dropped the ball when it came to FTX, so now they're just trying to flex their muscles. Binance has already replied to these allegations, saying that they're going to fight this. I don't believe the SEC's pockets are deep enough to take on Binance. And although this will probably take years to settle, similar to the Ripple case, I do believe eventually it's just gonna end in a slap on the wrist, a fine, and nobody's gonna care. Now, even if CZ does face criminal charges, which I don't think the SEC has the legal power to do, they're gonna need to bring in the Department of Justice. He wouldn't step on American soil, so unless they're gonna bring in Batman to extradite him out of China, nothing's gonna happen to him. Now, in the short term, yes, this is gonna cause pain in the market. The market market is irrational and people react to news for absolutely no reason. Nothing has changed in crypto. Nothing has changed about the use cases. And I truly believe in the future, every asset is going to be tokenized. It's all going to be on the ledger. We're going to be using smart contracts. We're going to get rid of middlemen. We're going to have instant settlement and the technology is here to stay. So to me, this is just a small blip in the map that is irrelevant. However, we did get two important things that came out of this. The first one here is in all these documents, the SEC does mention specific coins that they are claiming that are securities, specifically BNB, Solana, ADA, Matic, Filecoin, Cosmos, Sand, Mana. And for Sand and Mana, it's kind of unfortunate. Metaverse coins were pumping with the Apple conference and their VR headset, Algo, AXS, and Cody. Now the timing on all this is very suspicious with the whole Hong Kong narrative and the fact that retail investors are gonna be able to purchase top coins. However, on the good side, there is no mention of Ethereum as a security in this list, as well as Bitcoin, but we all knew that. So Ethereum seems to be in the clear for the time being. Now, the other thing that is super important was that we got to see an official government profile tweet this graphic out here saying, we are operating as an effing unlicensed securities exchange in the USA, bro. Which is of course a quote allegedly by Binance Finance's chief compliance officer in 2018. It's just hilarious to see a, an official government profile tweet this out. So short term, yes, we're going to have some pain. Long term, who cares? But we will continue to monitor this story because it's important to the markets on the day to day. Next up, let's talk about NFTs because they have been performing pretty well lately. Last week, we did see a bunch of cooks on Ethereum. And this week, we're seeing really good mints for Bitcoin. We first had Bitcoin bears mint their Gen 2, the Cubs, which was a 10K collection minting for 0.0028 Bitcoin. And it successfully minted out and saw up to a 4X in the floor price hitting 0.012 Bitcoin, which personally I did expect this to mint out and do well because they have a good community. The one that shocked me, not because they minted out, because it is by Ordinally, who is an OG in the Ordinal space and he has taken over development of Ordinals with Raph. But this shocked me because of the amount of volume it saw is going to be the Ordinal monkey babies, which is the gen two of the ordinal monkeys, which have a floor of like 0.8 or 0.9 Bitcoin. But these minted for 0.009, essentially 0.01 Bitcoin. And they're currently trading at like a nine or 10 X. We did see some 10 X sales on this and the amount of sales on it is what shocked me. I expected them to mint out very quickly. It's a small supply. I expected them to have some sales, but not this many sales. So big congrats to the team behind this. So if you were lucky enough to have whitelist for this, you did
did hit a 10X or over $2,000 in profits if you did flip it. I personally hold one, I have not flipped it. What I like about these small collections that are still notable is that they're notable enough to get some really good collabs and the supply is small enough to have really great odds of winning whitelist for upcoming projects. Very similar to my group, Gorilla Labs, a small plug, but I will continue to monitor the Bitcoin market, both ordinals and BRC 20s. Upcoming this week, we have Meta BRC, which is a free BRC 20 claim and whitelist is currently selling for roughly $300. So I do expect this one to perform well. I'm also excited for BTOC, which is by Gajira. They were supposed to have a Twitter space with Shan, Frank and Binance. I'm not sure when that's gonna be happening now that Binance is in the muck with the SEC, but we will continue to monitor this project as well. I'm still bullish on it, but uh, we're gonna have to wait and see when they decide to launch. Moving into Ethereum NFTs, I'm mainly just watching the secondary market. There's nothing upcoming in the next week that I'm crazy excited about. Fortunately for holders, but unfortunately for me, one of the collections I wanted to buy into after taking a bit of profits from Memeland is going to be Azuki because I wanted to get in before the Azuki Vegas event. I did think I had a bit more time, but you can see here the floor has just spiked from 15 ETH hitting above 17 ETH. It's up 22% over the past seven days. Now I do think there is still room for this collection to run and Azuki is not a bad hold in my opinion. However, in this market, I don't know if I want to be caught holding something. I always forget I could do this, but I could always take out a loan on it. For the time being, I'm just going to wait and continue to monitor things. Another collection I did plan on getting into was D Gods because I know they have their upcoming season three. So I thought the floor was going to do really well. Unfortunately, this one too did start to spike. It went from eight Ethereum close to 10. It did temporarily flip mutant apes. However, it has calmed down a little bit coming down closer to nine Ethereum. So maybe I'm going to get a better entry. I would like to get in under nine if I'm going to get into it. I don't know that much about D Gods other than season three coming up for D Gods and season two, I believe, coming up for Utes. So I need to do a bit more research. However, the reason we're talking about it right now is because they have this new protocol for decentralized IDs that they're launching, which is right now for their collection. However, they are going to be releasing it to other collections. And what this essentially does is you can connect your Twitter and Discord and verify that you are either a D Gods or a Ute holder. And what that's going to do is the the D Gods account and the use account is automatically going to follow your profile. And they're also going to have a one click follow all holders button. So if you hold Utes or if you hold D Gods and you want to follow other people in the ecosystem, you're going to be able to do this in one shot. It's kind of replacing the whole ape follow ape, kaiju follow kaiju, that meta where people put a hashtag and they go around following other apes or kaijus or meme land, whichever project. So this is a really cool idea. I'm not sure how it's going to work with the Twitter API if there's going to be issues of people getting banned because they're following 3000 plus people in one click. I also think this is going to be a problem when it comes to scammers because somebody's just going to be able to go spend a couple thousand bucks, buy a Utes, get a bunch of people, including the official D Gods and Utes account to follow them, sort of validating their profile. Then they could, you know, do their scams, sell the Ute. And if they sell it in profit, they even make money on the trade. And this kind of facilitated their scam. I personally look at a lot of accounts the, one of the first thing I look for is who do I know who also follows this, especially when I'm looking up a new wallet or a new protocol or something that I'm not sure is the official account. I often look at who follows this account. So this is going to become a problem and we're no longer going to be able to rely on that. I mean, you shouldn't rely on it anyways. You should never look at an account and think, oh, Gorilla or Frank or whoever follows it. So it's safe. But now it's going to become an even bigger issue. So I really like the idea. I think it's innovative and I'm excited to see if other projects adopt it, but I also think there's some downsides that we're going to need to keep in mind. Now, another innovation that a project did with Twitter is going to be the This Is Orange project by, or it was purchased by Ben.eth. So we're just going to say by Ben.eth. And if you look next to his blue check mark here, you'll notice an orange square. This
this is part of the Twitter affiliate program. If I click it, it's going to lead me directly to the Orange account. So I really like this idea. I think it's super innovative. It's definitely not sustainable because it costs the main account a thousand dollars a month, which is fine for projects to have this, but then it costs you $50 per affiliate account. So if you have 10,000 holders, that's over $5 million per year, just to let every single holder have that little orange square. So they're either going to pass this cost on to their holders, which I do not think for this project, especially since it's associated to some controversial people, it's going to be sustainable, but I can definitely see some more notable collections like Board Ape Yacht Club, Azuki, D Gods, Meme Land adopting this and people paying the project in order to have this badge. Now, speaking of Meme Land, I personally do subscribe to the idea that we are going to to be getting either some announcement about meme coin or hopefully reveal on the 9th of June, which is 6-9. I was really hopeful about the whole Hong Kong narrative, thinking maybe even they're going to use meme coin as an example. It does seem like the coin is going to need 12 months of history. So it seems like there's a 0% chance meme coin is listed anywhere in Hong Kong. Also with all the Binance FUD coming out, I hope it doesn't affect any of the meme coin drops. We also have Ray tweeting, I didn't choose the bear market, the bear market chose me. So it does seem like they're going to be powering through all the Binance FUD and continuing with their plans to launch whenever they were planning to launch. They also continue to tweet out that there is no utility behind the coin, just checking all the boxes, legally speaking. But I am very excited for the partial reveal. The Florida meme land, in my opinion, it's inevitable that we break 10 Ethereum. And that is not financial advice. I am very deeply invested into meme land, so it definitely helps me if it goes above 10 ETH. But I think they have built a very strong community with no PFP. So if the art reveals and it's fire and we're going to get only a partial reveal we're not going to get the full trait reveal but even if that art reveals and it's fire that's going to be great for people they can start using this as their pfp and identifying as one of their captains so overall i am very excited for the future of meme land and just overall really excited to see this play out i've held my captains for what now like over eight months and my potatoes probably over a year so really excited to see this play out and uh yeah hopefully they do reveal on the 9th of June. Finally, Apple revealed their Vision Pro VR headset. I think it's really cool. Overall, it's pretty much what I expected in terms of the use cases. Being able to control it with your voice and your fingers is also really cool. I don't believe it's gonna work as well as they show it. They kind of show in the bottom corner, like the girl is just slightly moving her fingers and the whole screen changes, everything reacts. I think there's a 0% chance that it's gonna be that responsive. Of course, it seems like we're gonna have to wait a year before we're going to be able to get these so we will find out and they still have a year to develop this and make sure the technology works perfectly the other thing i like is that if somebody comes into frame while you are browsing or working you kind of see them through the lens it recognizes that they're there and you're able to see them and have a conversation with them they're able to see your eyes and where you're looking and i think this is going to pair really well with the new features on the airpods where if somebody comes to talk to you it automatically lowers so you don't have to take the earpod out of your ear and go what or when there's loud noises around you, if somebody's vacuuming, if people are playing loud music, if there's a lot of speech around you, but not directly to you, it's gonna block all that noise out. So if you're in a noisy office, you're gonna be able to work and hear your meeting or whatever you're listening to. So the use cases of it seem cool, but the device itself is really big. It looks like ski goggles. Everybody is kind of trolling it. There's this huge wire coming out of the side that leads to a battery pack. You gotta carry it in your pocket. That only lasts for two hours. Hours. So if they're saying two hours, it probably only lasts like one, one and a half after a little bit of usage. So I definitely feel like this is not something Steve Jobs would have signed off on. He was known for being ruthless with his employees and demanding the best of them having sleek products that look amazing. And when I look at this wire, it just doesn't say Steve Jobs. But the worst part of all, I think is the price tag. $3,500 for this device is way too expensive if they expect to have mass adoption with that money you can go and buy a really good laptop and still have money over to go buy like a valve headset but it's great that they are headed in the direction of the metaverse i think we're going to see a ton of companies developing for these products but the metaverse is still very far away in my opinion based on what they showed that's it for today's video if you enjoyed it be sure to give it a big thumbs up if you aren't already subscribed to my channel would you kindly hit that subscribe button follow me on twitter hit the notification bell thank you for watching the crypto gorilla
Peace. Uh, uh, uh.